Hello everyone. So we will uh, deal with also on uh, uh, about execution trace, but in the DRM uh, case this time, DRM uh, analysis. So um, uh, some months ago, uh, we analyzed uh, newly obfuscated uh, DRM code, and uh, what we are going to show you is uh, all the protection involved in the, this DRM and uh, all the technique we use to uh, to bypass uh, them. A uh, quick presentation. Uh, so we we work on this uh, analy analysis uh, at Grax Lab uh, uh, some months ago with uh, Camille Mouget. Hi. Uh, he is now working at uh, CADAM um, in France now, and uh, me, Francis, I'm uh, still working at Grax Lab for two years. So we'll speak about, of course, reverse uh, engineering. Uh, to, to, to present uh, the DRM stuff and our attack uh, methodology. Uh, then we will uh, talk about execution trace uh, that concern all of the uh, collection of data uh, of a program during the time, and then uh, its analysis. Uh, and then uh, code obfuscation, so all the, all the protection we try to fight and uh, our attacks uh, based on the, this trace. Uh, I guess uh, everyone here is uh, used to obfuscation, but quickly, uh, what obfuscation is, it's some proceed that uh, make our reverse engineering work longer, harder, and uh, more expensive. So uh, we have some uh, example of uh, some basic protection like code flattening, data flow protection, or junk code that we encounter. So. We, we think that uh, binary obfuscation is like an onion because you have to remove uh, step by step every layer, each one making you cry a bit more. <laughs> uh, so to start with uh, the DRM we analyzed, um, we, we saw that there, there was some uh, network communication. So uh, we, we, look at, we looked up the, the packet content uh, and we see that uh, there is uh, high entropy data in it. So maybe the, the presence of compression or crypto. And uh, then we took our favorite tools to try to debug and analyze the code in static and dynamic uh, way. So we see that uh, all the control flow graph of all function involved in the DRM uh, were flattened, by, protected by code flattening per proceed. And all instruction uh, in all basic block of a flattened function are um, also obfuscated with junk code and uh, instruction substitution. So with classical tools, it's very complicated to uh, analyze this kind of code. So I will present the first layer, the code flattening. The, as an example, here you have a normal control flow graph of a, a basic function with a loop and a precondition and uh, the output. And here is the flattened version, and all the code uh, involved in the DRM uh, is like that. Uh, it's classical code flattening with a, a first basic block that is executed at the start of the function, and then uh, we have a, a dispatcher that chooses the, the next basic block to execute, and then the code is executed, and the next basic block is set, the dispatcher jumps, and so on. And uh, as I said, uh, all code in each basic block is also obfuscated, so how to deal with this kind of protection. So here, uh, we, uh, we found two uh, possible approach. Uh, the first one is to study the, the protection itself. So basically, uh, we can do some uh, symbolic uh, execution of the code uh, to, to find the old path in the, in the functions. So the advantage here is that you can reuse uh, the tools that you have made if you encounter uh, another program that uses the same uh, uh, comp uh, protection uh, proceed. Uh, but uh, in our case, it was uh, very too complex. We have to face with a combinatory, combinatory uh, explosion uh, and a lot of resources needed, so we are still working on it. And uh, we, um, we also tried this kind of approach on uh, OLLVM project that was presented yesterday, and so uh, we will uh, show you at the end of this talk some, uh, some slide uh, on this subject. And uh, the other approach, is to uh, study only one ex uh, execution, so by producing uh, a trace. 
uh, there is no more CFG because we are just uh, recording one uh, one path to to analyze. To analyze. Uh, the, the main advantage here is that um, uh, the code is very uh, is easier to understand because we know that uh, the output that we uh, try to understand is produced by the code we recorded. So we just have to uh, search uh, to do uh, some analyze passes on the code we we instrumented. So what we did, we choose of course the execution trace approach, and uh, what we need is to uh, record the context evolution uh, over the time. So uh, basically, the register uh, states or all the register value for each instruction, each executed instruction, so all the code executed, and all memory accesses uh, uh, done by the executed instruction. Then we needed a tool to manage uh, the, the execution trace we, we produced, and then we needed uh, some module to uh, to access the ex execution trace data to uh, extract, in fact, the, the, the relevant information. So here is the list of the context to deal with: instrumentation, uh, data collection, the database, so the efficient trace storage, and then processing, so the, the relevant access of the information. So we made a, a tool that we named Petra, and uh, Camille will uh, will present you now. Okay, um, hi guy. So uh, what is uh, Petra? It stands for uh, Python Trace Analyzer. Uh, this is, uh, as uh, Gigi said, uh, execution trace management framework. Uh, so we want to provide an API to just manipulating trace, uh, do some requests, um, and have to be so fully modular to. Uh, um, to be used with uh, external tools and uh, scalable. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, our uh, DRM um, trace is about uh, uh, hundred millions of instructions and uh, half uh, uh, memory accesses. So, we want uh, to uh, to have this trace in memory and be able to process uh, some requests in an uh, acceptable response time. That because we want to use our tool, of course. And uh, it has to be architecture independent because we want to use it on uh, our AM uh, uh, x86 extra. So generally speaking, you just want to, to say, hey, I have an idea, and I want to, to make a proof of concept, test it, and uh, if it works, uh, I will uh, do some things um, clean. So just a few words of uh, an implementation. Uh, it's layered, it's a modular. You get the analyzer parts, which is uh, the, the parts we, uh, which um, uh, query uh, database and uh, um, output some information. Uh, you got the parser to uh, to manage the trace, uh, external tools to, uh, for, for instance, this assembly one, uh, this assembly engine, etc. And actually, the code isn't uh, yet, uh, yet open source. Uh, but uh, if you want to, to reproduce uh, them, uh, we, got, we, we write uh, a big paper on uh, Stick uh, 2018, and uh, we even do a UML uh, memory model in it. Yeah, <coughs> we actually uh, do it. <laughs> and so a choice in, uh, of implementation, we choose uh, MongoDB uh, for scalable, and because we are lazy and it's very easy to, to use and to prototype with it. We got a database per trace because we don't want a MongoDB lock. And we want to be able to uh, do uh, some hypothesis on the on entries. So for instance, uh, we said uh, if uh, we have two entries with ID1 and ID2, the entries with ID2 uh, has happened in the time after the, the ID1. Uh, for the execution trace, we use uh, Intel pin, but uh, we can also use uh, MySum Sandbox or uh, HIDA or LIDABIG extra. And for this assembly engine, first we used the uh, DiceStorm, and then uh, we switched to MySum to be architecture independent and to obtain uh, directly uh, an uh, intermediate uh, representation. Uh, okay, so just a few words uh, about MySum because uh, we use it a lot in, in uh, our, um, our code. Uh, it's uh, been developed by uh, Fabrice Desclo. Uh, um, the version two has been released uh, just a month ago, and the main difference between the version two and version one is that not just only a Fabrice can use it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I also uh, develop on it. 
and it's av available on uh, Google Code. So uh, it's composed with uh, Python and assembly disassembly engine. Is it right? So when you write your uh, assembly, you uh, automatically uh, get the disassembly engine. Uh, you get then uh, an interpreted representation, which is uh, reverse oriented. Just a few words. And a uh, JIT engine uh, based on a tiny CC, uh, LLVM, or just Python. And uh, we even got a regression test. So what are the uh, architectures uh, supported? Yeah, we have um, 86, uh, yeah, x86, uh, ML, uh, RAM, DMSP uh, for uh, 30 for the, um, for the micro corruption challenge, of course, uh, SH4 for fun and extra. And then uh, we got two uh, customizable simplification engine. Uh, when we when we uh, get some expression to simplify, we just add it and it, it do uh, some stuff. Uh, we can parse, uh, we can sandbox uh, some binaries. Uh, <laughs> we have to rewrite the Windows architecture independent to uh, to manage uh, some happy, uh, APIs and to update our sandbox, uh, simulating uh, the uh, the function. Uh, <coughs> Uh, impact. Uh, we we use the health team to uh, manipulate the binary, which is like uh, SCAPI for binary, and uh, wrote uh, by the same guy, right by the same guy, and uh, it's links with uh, some other tools. So just first demo um, on the shell code. <coughs> so uh, we got our shell code uh, here. It's just uh, ASCII uh, ASCII one and. Okay, so our shell code. Uh, first, we just um, build a PE with to uh, use with other tools using uh, elf steam. Then we got our uh, PE uh, with uh, our shell code. And then uh, we will use the uh, MySim sandbox to emulate the binaries with a try and die approach. So just say, okay, uh, run the DPE. And then you crash. <coughs> okay. <laughs> so what's happened here? Actually, uh, we can see uh, this address is not uh, in virtual memory, and uh, we see the uh, file segment. So for guys, uh, we are doing malware. Um, so we tell to Mayasam to um, to manage it. Okay, not this one. And we crash again. <coughs> But at uh, this time, it's because uh, it tried to, uh, to uh, browse the uh, DLL uh, list. So we tell it, OK, so now uh, import some DLL. You can see uh, them. And then it run, it run, it run, it run, and it crash. So again, uh, why at this time it wants to uh, call this uh, function? Actually, uh, when the Myasm is launched uh, and uh, when he pass uh, DLL, he, he wrote uh, on a paper, OK, uh, at this address, I, uh, I uh, put this, uh, this function, at this one, extra, and so on. And uh, so we just have to, uh, to uh, simulate this, um, this function. So what we, what we actually do is, OK, so just uh, we just say, OK, uh, add, an add uh, this function. She's doing nothing. We just uh, say, OK, there is two args. I don't know if you can. OK. Two args and uh, just a return uh, one. So actually nothing. And then it runs and crash again, but on an other function. So, I'll, so I think uh, you get the point. Um, I just had just a few other functions, which are uh, create process, URL download, and a uh, quick uh, implementation of printf. So we launch it. <coughs> and we got a URL download to cache uh, with a this URL and a create process uh, after. So this is to show you how we can um, okay, not this one. how we can just have a sandbox and uh, control all the impact of a function. And actually, we also um, control uh, all pointer, all uh, page uh, management. So when so if we do uh, two trace, uh, 
with the same code, it's completely uh, determinist and the trace will be exactly the same. So if you do two trace by modifying just one byte in, uh, in the input, the only difference will be the result of this uh, modification. And second demo uh, quickly to show you a uh, 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 case on uh, ARM. So uh, what we got is just uh, we uh, simulate uh, MD5 and we got uh, the general purpose register at each time, the instruction executed, and uh, memory access, like this one. OK. So uh, you will continue we'll, uh, back to the DRM case. OK. Um, so now back to the, the DRM. So in introduction, um, what we want to know to try to understand all the DRM codes uh, is to fully understand uh, an algorithm that produces uh, a block of data, potentially uh, some crypto or compression, and uh, to understand what is inside, so all the uh, encryption function involved in it, and all derivation uh, of data, etc. So what we can say is uh, uh, it's the, the Petra database contains all we need because we instrumented all the code that produces uh, the block. So uh, how to proceed? Uh, we have to identify all parts, so all functions. Uh, the input and output of all of these functions and uh, understand the link between them. Uh, for example, the, the, the encryption key, the, the data which are processed, yeah, and so on. The first uh, attack we, we did is a constant detection. So it's uh, very classical in the, this field. Uh, you know that uh, some uh, cryptography algorithm, algorithm uh, have uh, some matching constant, constants, like uh, hatching fun function, for example. So if an algori algorithm is present in our trace, uh, we will find its constants. So uh, where we can find them, so the interesting places can be uh, in the instructions themselves. Uh, it's more like static analysis. It's like a, a move instruction by, with the constant in a register. Uh, but if the program is obfuscated and, uh, for example, we, we search for the for constant, uh, the program can make uh, a move to, move to, and add them. So we cannot find them in the instruction. So we have to research for it in processor registers and uh, also memory access. Why not? Again, Petra provides uh, all uh, direct access to, uh, to all these elements. So we have to just to search it. So in practical, our method is to add a module to Petra. It's a simple uh, Python script where we wrote uh, a list of constant and the uh, algorithm uh, associated, and then we do a full research, a full research in uh, Petra database for this constant. Um, we didn't found, found uh, any false positive, but it can happen. Uh, but we think there is a low probability for it, and uh, if you have some false positive, you can remove it by grouping the results to it, remove isolated constant. So it's a very simple, quick, and efficient method. Uh, the results, um, we found a Merson twister uh, identification with, uh, with uh, its constant. Um, it's, a, it's a PRNG. We also uh, identified the five constants of the SHA-1 uh, algorithm uh, by finding its, uh, its five constants. And uh, all we have to do then is to add the SHA-1 uh, primitive uh, knowledge in uh, our core graph. So I will make uh, a little demo here uh, using Petra. So air is uh, the main Petra interface. Uh, for this example, we imported um, a trace of the uh, IS computation on the, the same DRM. It's not the, the SHA-1, but uh, an IS white box algorithm. Uh, on the first page, we can say some information about how we collected. And here, we will focus on the call graph. So we have some tool here. And if we access the call graph, we have um, a list of all function we are instrumented. So it's basically a tree. We can uh, access the number of instructions that are in each function, and uh, we can uh, command them. For example, if I click on this function, I can rename it, etc. So if uh, I guess that this function is a SHA-1, um, is a SHA-1, I will uh, rename it, and in all my call graph, all the functions that are involved in SHA-1 will be uh, also renamed. OK. Um, Next one, uh, we needed to uh, identify inputs and outputs on a function. 
uh, basically for the SHA-1, we needed to know if the, the, the output data of the SHA-1 function is uh, really the, the, the original SHA-1 uh, value and uh, to check if it's not modified. So we have uh, to, um, to, to do uh, IO uh, identification. So for unidentified function, it can help us to identify them because uh, if we have the input and output, we can do some guessing and uh, find the purpose of the function. And if we have uh, already uh, some identified function, typically like the SHA-1, uh, it can help us to, uh, to find uh, the arguments where they come from and do the link between the other primitive of the, the DRM algorithm. So uh, what we know about the input and output, by, by studying uh, memory access uh, on a function, if a data is processed by a function, um, the input will be read and uh, all result will, results will be written uh, in memory. Again, Petra can help us to find them because we instrumented all memory accesses of the, the DRM code. So to identify outputs, uh, what we did is to um, a memory uh, diff so we uh, take the memory state uh, after the, the execution of the function minus the, the one before. Uh, also, we can remove the data that are written but read uh, again before the end of the function because it can be a uh, temporary data and not really uh, output. And to identify outputs, just uh, we read the, the data that are read the first time by the function. Then we can add several heuristics like uh, pointer detection to avoid analyzing useless data. Uh, block grouping to uh, reconstruct uh, pseudo variables and uh, entropy computing to, to have some information about some crypto data and so on. So the result of this method, uh, it's, we think, a very efficient method to find uh, algorithm, uh, to, to link, sorry, uh, algorithm between, uh, between them. And um, uh, thanks to that, we found uh, another protection by looking uh, for an input, input and output of uh, all, uh, all, uh, all function. It's uh, transform, mem transform memory. So in fact, uh, the, the DRM code never um, writes the, the data that it proceeds in clear format in, uh, in RAM. It is uh, de derived by some uh, computation. Uh, we didn't identify a pattern in code to, uh, to break uh, this kind of protection, so we asked, it was very boring. We have to, uh, to, to find each, uh, each computation that were, that were uh, applied on each block. And uh, the only thing we, we, we managed to identify is that there is derivation function per memory, per memory area. So in one block, uh, uh, only one computation will be, uh, will be applied. So if we find uh, the transformation of one uh, byte, it's all the block that will be the same. Um, uh, so uh, some demo of uh, memory uh, diff. So I will take as example um, the iOS one because it's more uh, interesting. So here we, uh, we identify, we, we Kami will uh, discuss of the iOS later, but here, uh, we imagine that we, we don't know uh, this function is uh, the IES core. We can click on it and um, do a mem rediff on it. Uh, here uh, we have uh, prepared the demo, so uh, all the data is in cache, but uh, here in the top we have a scheduler to, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to do a memory uh, diff in the background and be able to, to work uh, while the, <coughs> the mem diff is computed. Um, so we have uh, access to some information, uh, the memory read and the memory what is written. Uh, the heap part in blue and the stack part in, in green. We have the address of each block. Uh, data are grouped by uh, memory accesses, so they typically are, it's a, a four byte um, memory read. Uh, we have the ASCII dump, uh, the size of the block and the compression rate. Uh, so air as a demo, I, um, I take a block that is written. So here we can see that uh, it's a big block that is accessi accessed by the same instruction, uh, but byte, uh, yeah, byte per byte. Uh, the block is uh, have a big size and the compression rate uh, near to zero. Uh, and what we can see at the end of this block is that uh, there is uh, the same value of DD that is repeated. 
So typically uh, for the iOS, it's, uh, it's uh, the padding, but in general the padding is zero, not DD. So that's why we we found uh, the data was transformed. And for example, we we have some uh, interesting functionality like clicking on uh, a byte, and uh, we know uh, each me le me the memory access in database, the instruction that do the write. We can do th um, go to the to the instruction that uh, have written this byte and so on. So the um, the identified algorithm. So we we uh, we managed to uh, to check that uh, thanks to this method, the uh, Shawan input and outputs are the, the good ones. So uh, Shawan was fully uh, identified, and we had the the, it's, uh, the knowledge to our call graph. Uh, what we seen is that um, the Shawan inputs were certificates. So basically, it was a certificate chain uh, validation. And by looking at the certificate, we 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 see that it was uh, RSA and Shawan. Uh, signature algori algorithm. We, uh, uh, algorithm. Um, so we have to uh, identify in our trace the RSA uh, algorithm in case it, it was reused. It's uh, pretty important. So um, what we did to um, identify the RSA function, uh, the main idea is to uh, destroy the modular uh, exponentiation uh, computation uh, of RSA and uh, compute another execution trace. Uh, so uh, here are the steps. So we know that uh, the RSA, RSA sorry, algorithm uh, is used, uh, at least in the search, uh, search and validation. So uh, we patch all our certificate public exponent to one uh, to avoid the effect of exponentiation. We patch all certificate public modules to the max value. So the, 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 there is no uh, modular exponentiation. Uh, and then we produce again a new execution trace. And uh, we just have to compare the, the, the two traces in terms of uh, uh, number of instructions. And uh, we located the function that has uh, 50 uh, million instructions uh, less than the other. So we located precisely the, the, the place where RSA was computed. So then we add the RSA knowledge to the call graph. And uh, uh, the RSA uh, function were indeed uh, reused in the DRM uh, computation to do some uh, algorithm like uh, RSA or AEP. And uh, uh, now Kami will present some uh, other attacks we did. <coughs> okay, then um, to uh, uh, clearly understand uh, what it's doing, uh, we use uh, some data slicing and data tainting. So just uh, remind the data tainting, uh, it's uh, when uh, you follow all, all the elements that depend on a given one, and the slicing is the reverse algorithm. You find all elements uh, influencing a given one. So um, as we got a trace, we prefer to use the data slicing. It's a really, uh, it's more interesting because uh, in this protection, to avoid uh, uh, data tainting, uh, guys uh, have um, duplicate each uh, buffer, then duplicate it, uh, them again, 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 again. So data tainting completely explode. But uh, when you're doing slicing, you, um, you beginning from the, the output, and you just have uh, one path to. Uh, <coughs> to uh, to go to the input. Um, how we uh, how we manage this uh, using MySum again? So we use the symbolic execution. Uh, why uh, for uh, we begin at the beginning of the basic block containing uh, our targeted element. We execute uh, to the instruction containing uh, our element, and uh, we get the uh, the uh, equation depending on, on uh, uh, context at the beginning of the basic block. Why the basic block? Be, uh, it's an empirical result. Uh, it's clearly the, uh, a good one. Uh, then, uh, when we got uh, the dependency, uh, we continue by uh, by finding the last change and uh, um, apply the algorithm again. And for that, the thinking is the, the inverse. So, um, <laughs> slicing as a commercial. Um, so uh, when we uh, we go from uh, we begin with, um, with uh, a memory access, and we say, OK, so uh, what is the uh, access has been done? So um, <coughs> we ask to, uh, to find the dependencies and the equation. So we go to the memory access e uh, equation, and uh, all, if, uh, all its uh, dependencies. So here we, uh, it is an um, uh, octet uh, uh, memory uh, access, and uh, byte memory access, sorry, and then uh, on a double word. Extra, extra, and it depends on uh, tools one. So we just have uh, after to uh, to develop uh, each uh, part of our, our 
our uh, tree. And uh, recursively via then we can uh, link uh, outputs with, uh, with inputs. Uh, at the end, uh, when we so um, we uh, begin from the the block that has been uh, based to the uh, RSA, uh, it is a block one and block two, and um, we uh, as we know SHA one and uh, the Mason tree which is used to produce uh, three uh, random values, uh, we uh, we can compute this uh, dependency graph, and actually uh, this is uh, a RSA or AEP. <coughs> So um, then uh, we uh, move on our, in our second um, data or network on the network. Uh, we um, apply this algorithm again, and we got this uh, dependency graph. So it uh, looks like crypto, but um, for C1 to C3 we got a derivation, and and uh, we got all of uh, this uh, hash table uh, substitution table, which I apply before uh, using the XOR and before. Um, uh, go to the output. Um, so uh, we got an ID. We say, okay, um, in a function, uh, in a parsing function, when uh, there are two data in an uh, entry, um, there's a big probability that the same instruction will parse them. So for instance, you get the, the instruction that will parse the length of the data, then the instruction that will, part, uh, then that will compute the uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the buffer, and then the padding, uh, extra, extra. And so we say uh, we will regroup these instruction by classes when uh, they are computed uh, by the same instruction. Um, actually, what we obtain uh, commonly is uh, a pattern in class. So, uh, for instance, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And this is because in a just a loop, uh, there is a first instruction to read the first uh, byte, then the second, and the four. Extra, and uh, when we got that, uh, we group, we group uh, to the bytes uh, this way, and uh, the uh, the last is uh, in another uh, place. So applying this algorithm to uh, our entry give uh, give us uh, directly uh, this uh, this um, this structure, and we got three. Uh, th Three main blocks, uh, two of six bytes, and uh, the last one composed by uh, by the sixteen uh, bytes. Um, if you remember the the first uh, graph, it's like the C1 and the two blocks in C2. Then we apply the uh, reverse algorithm on uh, beginning from outputs uh, that uh, Gigi said, uh, showed to you with D D D D D padding, and uh, we uh, sh search for the last write. And uh, we got this structure. Uh, the first two bytes are used, uh, um, I think, for um, for length, then a group of bytes, and then uh, d d d d which are never, uh, which are write but never read. So if this is really padding, <coughs> that's a problem. Uh, so then you, we use the data slicing equation to uh, rebuild the equation of um, of uh, the. Uh, C3 uh, components, and we got this one. But this one, actually, if you look at the AES uh, key expansion uh, algorithm, uh, you can see that uh, S table that I use are actually uh, standing for uh, S box and Ercon uh, algorithm. And so there are some clues that we are pretty sure that uh, this is an AES uh, algorithm. So at this stage, we say, okay, so this is AS. We'll take the input, uh, pass in, uh, in our algorithm, and try to match the outputs. It did not work at all. Um, actually, um, it, there is some encryption steps that are used. Um, and the, the whole algorithm is done on, on modified states. Uh, in other words, the the raw data are never in clear, uh, even in the register, and never in memory. And so we call it a uh, white box. And because the key is also a parameter, we call it a dynamic white box. Why uh, there is uh, this one in a DRM, uh, so clearly to waste analysis time. And it's a good way to hiding inputs and outputs because we never know it. And 
if you want to reproduce uh, it on another uh, device or uh, system for interoperability or I don't know, we, the only solution is to rip it. And we cannot, in this case, uh, use the decryption algorithm. We just have the encrypt one. So how do we manage it? Um, actually, uh, in, um, in AES, um, uh, um, a port uh, uh, mixing columns, the only operation that is uh, made uh, between bit bytes is uh, XOR. So the derivation has to be homomorphic to this operation. So it is, it is import uh, a lot of um, properties on, uh, on uh, derivation mathemat mathematics properties. And there is only a limit set of candidates that can match. And then, um, because of the complexity of uh, AES, we got a lot of um, restriction on, uh, on uh, two candidates. And um, we finally ha um, be able to, uh, to read uh, and alter uh, values that are um, used by the algorithm, which, which is actually uh, AES CBC. Okay, um, a last one, uh, the instruction substitution. <coughs> so basically, uh, I, I think that uh, everybody knows this. Um, we uh, begin with uh, this kind of uh, function, and we say, okay, we will just modify constant, add a uh, junk code, extra, to, uh, to obtain uh, uh, the second one. And this is very easy to simplify, thanks to constant folding, uh, compilation passes are very effective on, on this. But uh, what we found in uh, the DRM is uh, what we call MBA, uh, for um, mixing Boolean and arithmetic, arithmetic uh, transformations, which give us this kind of identities. And uh, actually, uh, this kind of identities aren't uh, simplified by compila comp uh, compiler bases, but they aren't uh, simplified too by uh, MATLAB, Maple, Mathematica, Z3, and so on. Uh, actually, these tools try to, uh, to convert this problem to uh, uh, SAT1 and uh, use a solver on it, and ju it just fails. So how we manage it? Uh, the, the guys who are doing the protection uh, just have a, a small set of uh, to their identities, and then when uh, we identify uh, one, uh, we we uh, add it in a MySM simplification engine, and so when uh, we uh, compute the data slicing and equation, etc., uh, this is directly uh, simplified. We also find some uh, algorithm to generate uh, that kind of uh, expression. I'll just uh, show you one. So, just a bit of mathematics here, but it's quite easy. Uh, we use uh, just a matrix and uh, uh, its uh, associate vector. Uh, the, the matrix is in the base uh, GF2, that's to say uh, X, Y, uh, X, Wu, Y, sorry, uh, X, so Y, uh, not X, uh, not Y, etc. Uh, the V vector is composed only by 1 and, and uh, minus 1. And uh, we can say an equation is uh, uh, valid and generalizable to a uh, 2 uh, power n. Uh, if and only if uh, there is a linear combination that is equal to null elements. So, for instance, if I take this expression, the uh, e equivalent uh, uh, representation is that is one. So, with uh, the first column that is uh, representing uh, uh, x, the second that is uh, standing for uh, uh, y, and the last one for uh, x, x, or y. And uh, we say, okay, this is uh, plus, plus, and minus. Uh, this is the v vector. And how it works in a simplification? Actually, the simplification algorithm and the, and the uh, identity uh, generation is uh, the same. So if you want to simplify this expression, which is weird, um, we compute the, uh, the its representation. So uh, this one is for uh, x, this one for not x, and so on. The uh, plus, plus, uh, minus, uh, etc. We compute the linear combination, so the, so the 2 is uh, the 1 uh, plus 1. Uh, the error we got a 1 uh, minus 1 to the, for the 0 extra. And 
what we want is to nullify this uh, combination, this linear combination. So we just have to to uh, subtract with uh, one zero zero zero, then uh, one zero one zero. It's what we do with uh, this um, this uh, matrix on a v vector, and this one is actually uh, not uh, y, and this one is actually uh, not x or uh, y. So we got this final equation, which is valid for um, two power n. So if we just pass these two elements to the right, we got uh, these identities, and we can simplify our expression. But uh, in our uh, DRM, um, <laughs> it looks like this. So you got the code flattening, the uh, the uh, gen code extra. Uh, we we um, produce the uh, equation of the result depending on the only one uh, input. Uh, we got this. We identify a variable um, and a constant folding extra extra, and then actually it's just XOR with five C uh, for HMAC. Of course, we find uh, the same uh, things with uh, thirty six. Yeah. So your device is doing XOR. And, just, and you just lose a few percent of battery. <laughs> um, so uh, just some bonus, because you got time, yeah. Uh, we managed to graph uh, memory access over the time. So here you get the, the memory addresses, here the time. And um, so the first columns stand for the binary and uh, our data. The second one is the heap, and the last one is the stack. And then uh, by zooming on uh, on parts uh, which are um, with are co um, corresponding to a known algorithm. So, for instance, we got uh, a big one with a, a very big uh, basic block, and uh, we we don't know what it is doing. And uh, when we zoom on um, memory accesses, we clearly detect a loop uh, that has been uh, unfolded. And uh, loop uh, with uh, 32 iterations. Uh, if you look at the heap, it's exactly the same with the, the read of a uh, um, group of bytes. Um, this is the, co the noises uh, due to the code flattening and the context uh, updates. And at the just beginning, we see uh, two, uh, some uh, inputs that are read and some data that are uh, write, written. So for the output. So that's a pretty good way to uh, identify some algorithm. And another slide on uh, LLVM obfuscator uh, that I've been talking uh, yesterday. Uh, why uh, OL, uh, OEL LLVM? Because uh, it's open source. It's a recent project, and some a lot of people are talking about this. So, what are the protections that have been implemented uh, in it? The, there is the instruction substitution, but a very basic one. So, for instance. Uh, uh, in, um, instead of uh, uh, a plus b, there is a, a plus uh, r uh, minus r plus b. Uh, there is some opaque predicates that they call a bogus control flow, but actually there is only one. And they managed to add uh, code flattening. So this is uh, the initial function, an addition with the conditions, very basic one. And we we compute the code flattening. Uh, actually, it's not very flat, uh, uh, graph flattened because uh, they aren't using a jump table, but uh, a uh, succession of uh, if else uh, of uh, conditional jump. Then we use the symbolic execution, and um, from the beginning uh, we uh, we obtain the first context. Uh, we go to the uh, right basic block. The context is updated in symbolic. We uh, find the second one. When there is a condition, we split the, um, the symbolic execution and continue on, it, uh, on the first one, then on the, f on the second. And what you obtain at the end, uh, you obtain the this graph, which is uh, actually the, the same as the, the first one. Uh, but uh, we actually we aren't uh, able to. Uh, er is, I think that you can see, but uh, this is a jump and not a conditional jump. Because uh, actually we aren't able to to say uh, this is this condition, and uh, uh, we need to use some uh, STP solver extra to to manage it. 
to answer to uh, a question that has been uh, asked to uh, Maxima guys uh, yesterday. Uh, the instruction substitution is clearly uh, um, done, it's clearly um, simplified by uh, OLLVM uh, paces. So. so, in conclusion, um, what we can retain uh, uh, our approach is uh, that allowed us to uh, analyze a state of the art uh, obfuscation uh, mechanism in the DRM. Uh, for us, it's just one more method in the analyst uh, toolbox, uh, but it can be uh, reused uh, for uh, other cases like uh, malware analysis or even uh, vulnerability research. About the obfuscation, um, we can say that nowadays more and more uh, obfuscation are used and it's, uh, it's more and more complex. Um, Camille presented the uh, OLLVM and uh, we, we, tried that. we tried that because we wanted to, to compare, in fact, in what we have in our DRM and uh, in uh, OLLVM, but we think that uh, OLLVM is still uh, too young uh, at this time. Um, we can say also that uh, nowadays devices, uh, even the, the mobile ones, are, are got enough resources to execute uh, uh, some code like the, the XOR that uh, we've seen before. So uh, it can be, uh, uh, they have enough resources to, to, to wait them. Uh, so to conclude, our approach is not better than, than, uh, than another, it's just another way to, to proceed. So thank you.